Today I'm going to be doing a review of PLA filament from Monofilament Direct. So when you order a roll of filament uh, from Monofilament Direct, um, it'll come in a box like this. And it's shrink wrapped, as you'd expect. Um, and looking online, I went to their website and looked up their PLA filament. I looked at the filament. Everything looks fine. I measured it. Everything's pretty consistent. What I gathered from reading about their company is it, it sounds like they do a, a high volume shipping. They're sending out rolls of one, uh, one kilogram, and then they also send out two and four kilogram rolls, which I can only imagine how big those are. But it, it sounds like they're a direct shipper. They're cutting out any middleman, and they're trying to ship you. For people who print a lot, for people who want to print large quantities, it sounds like this is a great company because this roll was 26 bucks, and if you want just PLA and ABS and just really good basic filament to print with and you're printing large quantities and you don't want to spend 30, 40 bucks a roll, this seems like it would be a great company. So we're going to take it upstairs. I'll show you the settings that I'm going to use to print with it, and we'll come back down. We'll review them, see how it prints, and uh, let you know what I think of it. Well, here we are at the computer, and the first thing I wanted to do was to show you Monofilament Direct's website. Straight to the point, you want PLA or do you want ABS, Can And it says right here at the bottom, delivers a consistent high-quality 3D print at a low price. And that's what they do, and that's their goal. They're giving you PLA, which everybody uses. Um, obviously, you can select the color you want. Um, I'm testing with black. It ships quickly. It gets here quickly. Um, so there's not a ton of information on print temperature or um, heated bed and tips like that um, but I'm going to be printing four different uh, pieces um, to look at and each different part is going to test a different thing. Um, the first thing I wanted to print was a chess piece and with this there's some complex curves, there's slight overhangs, there's some details at the top um, so this is just a good general all-around part to print. The next thing I wanted to test was strength of the material, and that would be with this part here. There, yeah, there's some curves, and you'll see how it prints uh, on a long straight curve in the bonding layers. Is it going to bend or break at certain points where you see it break at, at some of these stress points? So this one will represent strength. And similarly, uh, I wanted to print a carabiner because it'll need strength, tensile strength, but it'll also have to bend and that's something that typically uh, most PLAs aren't great at but I wanted to see if this one would be able to bend and have strength um, all together and the, th the fourth thing I wanted to print was either a, a Link or a Yoda something that has lots of detail and this might take two three hours to print and it's gonna have some overhang so these parts are gonna take lots of time there's lots of detail We'll go downstairs after printing all four of these off. We'll take a look at them. We'll compare uh, different features, see about strength and accuracy and how the overhang prints and how the details, and I'll let you know what I think. Well, I just finished printing all of my four different test parts with Monofilament Direct's PLA, and here's how they turned out. So overall, I'm really happy with how these different parts printed out. Uh, the filament was easy to print with, under all situations, a wide range of settings, it worked great, and I didn't have any issues with clogging or anything like that. Um, and again, and again, under a wide range of settings, I can print this between 190 and 215. A lot of times I printed this at 205 or 210, and it came out great. That really blended the layers in. It might have been a little bit hotter. Again, maybe a little bit hotter than I should and it might have caused a little bit of droopiness but if I saw that I could turn down the temp a little um, but I really wanted to see what this filament could do and it turned out great under a wide range of temperature settings. Some companies will send you 750 gram rolls or whatever and hope you don't notice. This is a one kilogram roll and it's a lot of filament and you can print a ton of parts with it and this was, if I had to have one word for this, this was the workhorse that I used all the time for printing different test parts because I knew right out right off the print bed I could use it. I printed a, a, an adapter for my fan. Right off the print bed it looked great and it looked professional. It looked like a real part you would get 
with this black filament, the nice clean lines. You could barely see the lines. Um, and it just looked great. You could take it right off the print bed. You could print parts on this printer and you wouldn't even know that they're printed parts. So were some other filaments, you can see it's the, the lines and everything. This just looks super nice and clean. Um, so starting with the chess piece. Now, I didn't have any issues with this chess piece as far as detail or smooth lines or anything. One issue I did have was with an over, the overhang. And it wasn't much an issue with this filament as much as it was pushing this printer to its limits. Again, I printed all these parts at a 0.3 millimeter Z height. So every time it would print, it would go up 0.3 millimeters, which is a lot for this printer. Normally you wanna print at 0.1 or 0.2, but I wanted to print these fast and quickly and really push it to its, you know, quote, breaking point to see where it would, um, if it was going to fail, where it would, pushing it past where you should be printing. And one thing I encountered was with the overhang. And that's more of an issue with the small fan that this printer comes with. So a lot nicer, bigger printers have maybe a dual fan. And this just has one small fan that's trying to cool the, the, the heat sink and cool the part. And if you're gonna print this quickly with that big of an overhang and that Z spacing, you're gonna need a bigger fan. But once I knew that, and I just slowed the speed down a little, it printed fine. Other than that, the detail, everything, I could print as fast as I wanted. Just the overhangs with this printer, um, I knew I had to print at a slower speed, otherwise I was gonna get it to curl up. Um, as far as the carabiner, this, like most PLA, it's very rigid, and it's not gonna stretch and bend, but, um, and super smooth, and it, it came out great, and this one printed in, you know, under 10 minutes. This is super strong, it's not bending at all as I try to bend it. The lines on the edge, super clean and smooth like, like these fans I printed, the fan adapters and shrouds. Um, looking at this edge, this looks like a, a completely finished part, no sanding needed. You could give this to a friend or something and they, they would, you could tell them they pr you printed it and they would, you know, they would have to look very closely to see the different layers. And that's, like I said, at a 0.3 millimeter Z spacing. You print at 0.1 and you won't even see these layers. And again, with the Yoda head, 0.3, even with that, you could see a lots of detail in the ears and head and everything. And I printed this um, with some support under this. It probably didn't need it. I could have gone slower and made sure that fan was running at 100% and I wouldn't have had any issues um, with the ears or the overhangs. Again, there wasn't much drooping with this even though I didn't slow it down. The overhang provided that support and it printed really well and the detail in the face, it looked great. One other thing is I wish they would have a little bit more information about the, the filament itself. They have some print temperatures and things like that, but I wish they had more on tips and tricks and what to set your print bed at. And, and I know this is PLA and it prints well under all different settings and all different temperatures, and it did, it printed great, but I wish they just had a little bit more information, whether it's on the roll or whether it's on a sheet they send with the filament in the box or on their website. And again, I use this filament so much because I really liked how all the parts were turning out. I was printing off adapters and different uh, reducers for fan shrouds and things like that because this stuff just looked great right off the printer. With this black color and this filament, it, it was unlike other filament where it, it kind of looked gimmicky or something. This looked like, if, if you see this fan, it looks like a real part. It looks like something that would come with the printer or something you would buy. And I could see this filament being used in, in a business setting or someone where you're prototyping parts. You're getting a big roll at a really reasonable price as a pair compared to other companies where you're getting less filament that's more expensive, you're getting a ton. You can print these off, they look super clean, and you can test fit them. If it doesn't work, you print off another one and another one. It's just a really nice filament that comes out looking really professional and something, it doesn't look like it's printed off a cheap, cheap printer like this. It, it looks like it's something printed off a nicer printer or something that's not even printed off a 3D printer. It just looks, you would have to look closely to notice that it's 3D printed. So I highly recommend going to their website and checking it out and getting a roll of their PLA. It prints nice and smooth and you get a ton for what you pay for. It's a really great filament to have when you're printing a ton of parts 
and like a lot of beginners you're just printing tons of stuff you don't even know what you're printing and this is perfect for that this is great for pro prototyping parts and printing all different sorts of stuff and you know it's going to come out looking great and especially i have to say with this black filament for if you're printing off printer parts or things like that you print them off you put them on there you don't even know it's a printed part it looks like it came with the printer so i'm really happy with how it turned out so let me know what you think. If you pick up a roll from Monofilament Direct, let me know how it prints, and I hope you like this review. Thanks. Going into Cura, and this is the old version, you know, we can bring in that bottle opener, and we can uh, rotate it to how you're going to actually print it. Um, and the first thing I do is I open up my profile and I bring in uh, base PLA settings. And the first things I look at are print temperature. Now, from the pieces I've printed so far, and I've printed, by the way, this prints really great structural parts. If, if you want to print a ton of different versions of a part you know, to test how it's going to print, I've printed off several different parts. And these are great, this black PLA that they have super strong, super accurate, everything has been very precise. Um, so a part like this would be great with this PLA. Um, and I've tested it at 95, 195 Celsius all the way up to 210. They've all been great. If you want it super, you know, even more accurate, um, a little lower temperature, the 210 you might get a little drooping like on that Yoda print. I might print it at a little lower temp to, to get the accuracy up. Um, but so anywhere around 200, 205 will be fine. Bed temperature, it probably doesn't need a heated bed. I bet this would print just fine on glass or um, blue masking tape, but I use the heated bed anyways. Um, for this part, we could probably bump it up to 50 to print it a little quicker. You don't need the detail. Um, the layer height, 0.2 is fine. It doesn't have to be accurate. With a more detailed part, I might slow that or shrink that down, um, but it'll increase the time. Shell thickness, I want to keep these pretty high to keep them nice and strong. And density, I might bump this up to 60 or 70. Um, support, this doesn't need any support, this part. But like I said, for different parts like the Yoda or the Link or things like that, that will need support type everywhere. Um, more advanced settings, this probably doesn't need to be up at 50. Like I said, this is, I've had no problems with uh, any extra filament coming out. This could be even lower than that. Initial layer thickness, it won't hurt to move this up a little to get a little extra filament on that first layer. Um, although, like I said, with this PLA, no matter what you change, this is very versatile. Everything seems to print well. It's just minor, minor issues. If you look at the bottom and say, oh, you know what, I could use a little bit more filament here at the bottom. Let's make this 150. Maybe pump out a little more filament on that first layer so there's not any gaps. But Either way, it prints fine. Um, travel speed, you can make it even faster. You can bump this up to 150 if you want. First layer, I like to print a little slower. Infill faster. Um, the outer shell and inner shell, I like to print a little slower. Other than that, though, like I said, this PLA prints well with everything. 